being here. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, Espresso and UI Automator, which are uh, two framework for uh, Android automation testing. Um, my name is Fabio Barbosa. I work here at Midair over a year with uh, the Espresso framework. And uh, I've uh, also worked previously with Calabash, which is also an, a, a, a tool for automating tests. And uh, I'm into mobile automation. I'm Daniel. Uh, I'm also a mobile QA engineer here at Mindera. Uh, I work in here in Mindera for uh, almost two years, uh, and I've been working uh, with uh, UI, UI Automator for almost over a year, and also a bit of Espresso as well. So today, uh, right now, we are going to talk about uh, Espresso and the uh, UI Automator, both. Uh, uh, Android testing support libraries from Google. We have decided to do this talk to share this knowledge because, as you know, mobile is a market that is growing a lot, uh, mainly on the, the past years. And uh, sometimes it's really hard to find a, a, a truly mobile QA engineer. And so uh, that's why we have decided to share this knowledge because we are here in Mindera, we, we love to share knowledge, not only inside Mindera, but outside in there as well. So these are the topics we are going to approach in this talk. We are going to explain it, what is Espresso and UI Automator. We're going to show you, to tell how it works, do a, a little demo on the tests running, and uh, how to install, and the syntax you can use to code. So what is Espresso, right? Okay, Espresso, it's a framework, like we have already said, it is given us by us by um, by Google, we ins inside the Android testing uh, support library. Uh, it is supposed to do a white box testing, which, which means that we are not going to test the whole app, we're going to test a single feature and a single activity. Like, uh, if you're going to test the login, we don't open the app and go to login. You're going to open the login and test everything inside it. So it is, it, it's really easy to, to learn, and uh, the incredible thing, it's super fast to run. So, how does it work? Oops, sorry. So, we program uh, an app, an Android app, inside Android Studio, right? And the tests are not different. We also code our tests within the Android Studio alongside the app. Um, we write to Mater and Espresso, so they are both uh, programmed inside the Android Studio. The difference is that with Espresso, we have access to the old source code of the app. Even when it's running, we have access to the, to the app. The threads, the code, the resources, everything the app has, Espresso can ex access it. That's the, ma the, ba the major advantage of using Espresso. It, is, it also has a disadvantage, which is you can't go outside the app. If you want to open the gallery or the camera, you can't interact with those apps. You can only interact with the, within the app. Here is a little demo on the, the app running that I made for this. So it's just going to walk around three views several times and check if it is in the right view. Uh, as you can see, it really runs fast and goes for, for different views and, and times. So how can you use it? If you, oops. Okay, so if you use Android Studio and if you, you do a, if you develop for Android applications, you probably use Gradle. So to use the Espresso and UI Automator, it's simple. Just add this line of code to Gradle and you already access to the Espresso and UI Automator. So let's code and see the syntax of this framework. So for Espresso, you just first need to create a test class, a suite of tests that you want to run. And you need to tell him how you're going to run it. Right now, we're going to run it with Android Joint JUnit 4. Okay, so it's a JUnit um, subclass for Android. So you also want to run with, uh, with an order, because if you don't put this, you don't have control over which tests run first or the second. Espresso is going to choose by itself which tests to run. 
So we, with this, you can control the order of the tests. Now, let's pass to the test rule. And what is the test rule? The test rules basically is the activity we're going to test. In each test case, you can say, I'm going to test this activity. I'm going to test the login activity, the main activity, whatever you want to test, it goes here. And when the, this class starts, this activity opens. So let's continue. So I want to create a test. In JUnit3, we need to add the, the word test in the beginning of the method so we can, it recognizes. But now we're going to unit, you're using JUnit4. And with this, you can no longer have to do this. You can call the method the name you want. And the only thing you have to do is an annotation for test. And it will recognize it is a test and run as a test. Uh, you can also have other methods that are not tests to uh, auxiliate in, the, in this. Now, you're working on a test and it's not finished. So you don't, you don't want that to imply uh, not, uh, to not build the app. So you just add ignore to the test and it goes through that test without using it. Now let's go to the syntax that we use. So this on view is for us to select an object inside the, that page, inside that activity. Like we're going to say on that view, which means that object with that ID, we're going to perform a click. That, that is a simple, that is the simple syntax. Okay, on that object with that ID, I want to perform this. But you can also do an assert and verify if it is correct or not. Uh, the best practices to use are is all of. So you want to use that word, all of, which means instead of using one ID, you can search that object by ID, by text, by class, by whatever means necessary to identify an object. And like you can use several, you can uh, several attributes to identify an object. You can also perform uh, several actions. You can, like in an edit text, you can edit the text and then click, okay? There are other options you can use in, uh, with Espresso, uh, like code coverage. Uh, it, it, uh, it sends you a report of all the code lines that are uh, covered by the UI testing, and you can check the code coverage. Test sharding each. If you have several devices, you can uh, uh, send the tests for several devices, like uh, I want a subtest for, for each device. We don't test all the tests in all devices, which reduces the time you need to testing. Healing resources is to make the app wait when uh, it shouldn't wait. And the uh, web views is to test the web views inside the app. Like I said, you can't go out outside the app. Test recorded, it's just in beta in Android Studio. You can open the app, start recording, do the test manually, and it records and generates the code that you need to run the test every time you want. Espresso intent is to catch the intent of going outside the app and validate that intent. You also have the report that is automatically generated uh, every time you run the tests. And to have all those op options, you just need to add another four lines of code, and you have those options whenever you want. So UI Automator, what is it? So UI Automator is also an uh, Android testing support library from Google. Uh, it is a black box testing framework, which means as we in, an, in Espresso need to know pretty much all activities uh, inside the app, in a UI automator, we don't do that. So we don't access the core of the, of the app, we don't test the core of the app, we just test the actual functionality of the app. We just test the UI of the app. Uh, another awesome uh, advantage of, the, of this framework, which to me is the, the most important, is that allows testing UI for multiple apps, which means inside the test you can test uh, in the single in the, in the single same in the same single test you can test across different apps you can interact with anything in your device you can open any any app you can test everything you can uh, interact with the device let's say press the home button device button uh, power button you can do anything it is uh, it does end-to-end -end testing which means 
um, again, as uh, we in Espresso need to launch a specific activity, in UI Automator we don't do that. We open the app and we uh, kind of simulate the user flow. We go through all the, the screens that we want to test. So that's, we, we, uh, that's why it uses, uh, it uh, does end-to-end -end testing. And also at last, uh, it's, it is really easy to learn. I mean, even for a person that doesn't have much background in programming, it, really, it is really easy to put the hands on and uh, work with, the, with that framework. So uh, after we set up everything, as uh, Fabio explained before, and uh, we have uh, our framework compiler, uh, we will use uh, this uh, piece of code pretty much in every test. So this, this code uh, will uh, open um, the device app that we want to test by the package name. So for this case, we, uh, for example, create a class, a device util class, and we include that code there to, with a method to start, start the main activity of that app. And in that method, we have to initialize the UI device instance by calling the instrumentation device. And after we have uh, that uh, UI device, device instance uh, created, we can, uh, as I said before, we can interact with, uh, with anything with the device. In this case, we will start from the home screen uh, by pressing the home button. We will wait for the launcher to be visible. And then finally, we will launch the app by the, app, the, by the package name. Uh, we'll, we will clear out any previous instance. And finally, we will wait for the app to finally appear on the screen. So after that, uh, after we got our app opened, we need to start accessing the UI elements. How? with a bunch of classes that UI Automator provided, which are pretty much these four. So UI collection, uh, it represents a container of, of several UI elements. For example, a product list or, or a result list. If you, for example, want to get the count of that product list or the result list, you use a, a UI collection. Then we have the UI object which is the most used uh, class in UI Automator that represents a single, a single UI element that is visible on the, on the screen. Uh, then we have the UI scrollable, scrollable class that, uh, like the, the name say, say it, uh, it allows us to scroll something uh, in, uh, in your device. So for, for example, if you want to search an uh, element that is not visible in the screen, we use the UI scrollable to perform the scroll. And finally, we have the UI selector that will identify that element by a resource ID, class name, text, or whatever you, you have to, to target that uh, UI element. So uh, after that, how can we initialize the UI elements? It's pre pretty much easy. We create the, the class that we want. In this case, we will uh, initiate a UI object. We will use that uh, auxiliary method uh, from the device instance to find the object. And then, as I said before, we use the, the class UI selector to target that uh, element by text or class name. As I said, we can also use resource ID in the exposition or anything you want. After we have the, the UI element initialized, we can finally interact with, with, with it. Uh, we can uh, just simple verify if it exists, or we can interact interacting with, the, with it by clicking on it or anything you want. In this case, we, we have a condition to verify if the button exists is in, and is enabled. And then finally, we click on the button. So now you ask me, uh, how the hell am I supposed to know every resource ID's class names, uh, description, and exposition of every element in the app? It's pre pretty simple. We just use this awesome tool that is a UI Automator Viewer that comes integrated with the Android SDK. You just need to call that command in your terminal, and it will open that tool 
then with your device connected to your laptop in the screen that you want to, 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 to see the resource ID that you are looking for, we click on the button, we dump the, the actual, the current screen of your device and it will give you the full hierarchy view of that, uh, of that uh, view. Then we can access any resource that we, that we are looking for. We can see that the index of that resource, text, resource ID class, even the package name of the app, anything you want. So, um, now I'm gonna show you an example of uh, UI Automator running uh, to you understand how easily it is to interact with anything outside the app that you are actually testing. In this example, it will open the Play Store from the launcher, it will perform a search in the Play Store, and it will verify if a, result, a valid result list is returned. You will notice, you can play. You will notice that UI Automator is not fast as Espresso because, as I said in the beginning, it simulates the the user user flow. As you can see, the test was as successfully passed. So, and this is what the code looks like. It is pretty much what what we saw before. We initialize the UI, the UI device instance by calling the instrumentation. Then we start again from the launcher, pressing the home button. In this case, I chose not to open the, the Play Store by the package name. Instead, instead of that, I chose to create a UI object to describe the Play Store button. So I created, so I initialized the UI object and I, I, I tried to find the object by the UI selector with the description Play Store. Uh, after that, I click and I wait for the, the Play Store to, to appear. Uh, once I am in the Play Store, uh, I have once again to initialize, initialize, initialize another uh, UI object for the search box with the resource ID. I click on it. Then uh, uh, once again, I need to initialize another UI object because it has a different resource ID uh, for the input box and then I set the text on that input box to search by Facebook. Then I use the device instance to simulate the enter button to submit the search. Uh, once I get the result list, I initialize uh, a class UI collection for the result list, list with the resource ID. Uh, I wait for the result list to appear and finally I use a JUnit assertion which is the most important step to verify uh, if the result list actually exists. And uh, after all this, if you have still doubts in which framework is more suitable for you, uh, why not use both? Yeah, it's possible. With the latest version of UI Automator 2.0, it's possible to have uh, both uh, frameworks in the same project. So that means you can actually use Espresso code and UI Automator code in the, single, in the same single test. Let's say, for example, that you find out that uh, the scroll action in UI Automator is really slow. Why not use the Espresso one? Yeah, it's possible. Let's say, for instance, that you want to test just an activity of your, of your app. Well, let's use Espresso for that and then use UI Automator to simulate the, the user flow on that activity. So Espresso and the UI Automator <coughs> are the perfect tandem, in my opinion, for Android uh, native app testing, functional testing. So after that, if you have any question. No questions? No? Um, the frameworks that you presented seem pretty awesome, but <coughs> I find it hard to believe that they are easy to configure. Is that straightforward to, to make this happen, to use this, these tools? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, really simple. Like I said, just add those four lines of, of code into Gradle, 
and you automatically have the, the Express and UI Automator. You just need to create a test class, like I've demonstrated, and uh, you have all the, the framework available. And you can even use the test recording uh, to just do an, a sample, and you can uh, like check all the, the, the syntax, because the, the test recorder is going to create the, the code that you, you use. So it's re really straightforward to use. Can you explain why do you use one or the other? Can you explain why do you use one or the other? Okay. Or Espresso uh, or UI Automator? I can explain in my uh, specific case, uh, as we need to um, test across different apps. For instance, uh, I'm going to give you an example. I want to test the share functionality of a product page, and uh, I want to see the content that's, that is shared on the Facebook. I can do that with Facebook, with uh, sorry, with the UI Automator, but not with the Espresso. You see? Okay, so why, why don't you use all this UI Automator? Because of the time. Well, like, like we said, Espresso is really fast. The, the point of each framework is really different. You, you can't assume that they are both for the same purpose. You, you use Espresso for white box texting and UI Automator for black box texting. There are two different concepts. So Espresso is supposed to test uniquely uh, the view, the activity, and UI Automator is going to test end to end the real, the, all the flow of the, the test case. Can you, can you explain the black box and white box? Because I think white testing should always be black box, right? You should uh, never interact with the, the code. Yeah, the that's, main but code. that's different for Espresso. Yeah, the you Espresso can, is going it to runs interact on the, with the app, main code. But it doesn't interact with the code. Yeah, Espresso interacts with the code. Espresso uh, interacts with the code, interacts with the threads that are, the app are, are available. Uh, so everything that the app has, Espresso has access to it. So that's white box testing. They're going to test the, the system itself, not the user experience. Okay, that's the, the main difference. Uh, if I'm not okay. sure. Okay, I see. Thanks. Any more questions? Okay, guys. Thank you. Hope you like it. Enjoy the rest of the tech day. <laughs>